What's up, people? In this video, Ricardo, check this one out when you get the time. Bro, I got nothing but time. I wonder what this video is. Ricardo, what'd you set me up with here? I'm scared. God, it seems boring. Oh, how long should I fast? Maybe not. Loren Lockman. The only other Loren that I know is a girl. And her name is, oh my God, it's so weird. Her name is Loren Hockman, but like H O C T H. Hockman. How funny. Um, yeah, don't dox her, please. Anyway, um, what was I talking about? Yeah, oh, this video. Oh, right. If you guys have any other recommendations for videos or YouTubers that you want me to take a look at and give you my opinion that you love so much. Oh, my God. I should. When, when should I make a t-shirt, right? When, when, when can I say that I've like gotten to the level of popularity where I can justify making a t-shirt, like, whatever, you know, all these fucking YouTubers have, like, hashtag fucking, you know, Gymshark, whatever, oh, fine, not Gymshark, but, like, anyway, how, how big do I need to be to have a t-shirt? Question of the day, answer in a comment. Um, how long should I fast, blah, 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 by Loren Lockman? I'm sure, I don't even, well, I haven't seen this video, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess he's, like, uh, if you're, ju you know, intermittent fasting is, 16 and 8 and then you can do OMAD and then you can do a 48 hour fast and then you can do a 72. I, I don't know I'm prejudging I'm an asshole but whatever let's watch this. The question was if the body knows best why are we determining predetermining deciding how long to fast for doesn't it make more sense just let the body fast until the body's done. And there's absolutely no question that would be ideal. The problem is, it's a little bit impractical for most people, right? Because you've got a business and you've got a business and you've got a business and people have things they need to go do. And so most people can't take an indeterminate amount of time off. Um, most people need to book their flights. Theoretically, you have to have a return flight to come into Costa Rica. There are other ways to, to, to do that. But, uh, and uh, the truth is, when I opened Tanglewood 22 and a half years ago, you could actually come any day you wanted, not Saturday, you could come any day. You could stay for any length of time. You could pay as you went. To be honest, I had no idea if I'd be able to get enough people to support myself. Okay, at first. And so I want to make it really easy for people. What happened was within about two years, we were so busy that I needed to know in advance when you're leaving so I could put the next people person in. If, if we don't know when someone's leaving and we have all the rooms are full, I, I gotta say to someone, yeah, we got space, I don't know when. I mean, how do they, how does that work? How do they book flights? How do they, you know, unfortunately, it's just a little bit impractical. So I, the truth is it would be ideal. But how many of you, if your body wanted to, would be able to go, you know, take the time to, to spend eight, nine, 10 weeks of your life here? Anyone do that? Because the truth is that for most of you, it would be that long or longer. The average body can go at least six weeks. For most people between six and eight weeks, and some people are wealthy in nutrient reserves, right? If you're wealthy in nutrient <laughs> reserves, you can go longer, okay? Adrian, you went six weeks last time. Could you have kept going? Yeah, absolutely. Wealthy in nutrient reserves, I like that. That's clever. I'll, I'll bet you anything this guy's from California. Uh, I mean, maybe, uh, who knows, whatever. Um, okay, wow, all right. Well, I was wrong with my like sassy prejudgment. That's like, start there. Um, hmm, six weeks. Is this like adult fat camp or something? Like go starve yourself in Costa Rica? If I didn't eat for six weeks, I'd be dead. Like no question, right? Um, I guess this is like fat camp for adults. Did I say that? I don't remember. Fucking antibiotics got me stupid. Um, okay. Um, I'm not saying that's not true, but... <laughs> But like, here's the deal, like, you know, I don't know. I don't understand how people, they, they think they can, what it, like, what it seems to me is people are looking for any excuse to not work out. Like, what are you so afraid of? Like, why are you so afraid of the gym? You know, like what, what's, gym's like a scary place to you. Like, it's actually one of the easiest things you'll ever do to like, you basically, you lift something up and you put it down 500 times in a, in a video, <laughs> in a video, <laughs> uh, in a workout right? You, you can be an idiot. You know, it requires no intelligence. It requires no communication with other human beings at all. Put your headphones in and fucking listen to an audiobook and work out. That's a, you can learn everything on YouTube, right? Like you can literally go into a gym and like type into YouTube, like example chest workout and, and copy the exercises. Exactly. There's no shortage of shit like that, right? Go to a, an aerobics class, but like stuff like this, it's just surprising to me, like to fast for six weeks, like, and I don't know, maybe if you're really fat, maybe you can also fast and work out. Like you can not eat for six weeks and train. Um, 
maybe uh, maybe the fat will like somehow fuel you like turn in, not turn into muscle but like fuel the processes necessary for muscle growth which i have heard can happen i think from a thomas delauer video that i did recently um but uh yeah i mean i don't i don't know um I don't know, whatever, like it's trying to help people lose weight. It's fucking Costa Rica, which is gorgeous. I kind of want to go there, actually, when I saw that yoga. I was like, because some, some of the yoga teachers at Equinox, they got certified in Costa Rica, and they just like would not shut up about how beautiful it is. Um, yeah. Anyway, whatever. Let's, uh, let's, let's hear more. So we're still plenty of reserves. It would have been no problem, okay? I mean, you know, it sounds crazy to most people. You can actually be okay six weeks without food, but you can't, or nutrients, but you can. Some of you may, may not have heard this before. My longest client fast was 18 and a half weeks, four and a half months. Is anyone ready to just put everything on hold for you know, five or six months? Take however long you need? Unfortunately, it's not really practical, so it would be ideal. And in the old days, people wrote like, that's what they said, you should just fast until your body's done. To be honest, I'm not completely convinced that it makes the most sense for everyone. Okay? It would make complete sense if we lived like other species do. If we lived in nature and just made our living in the forest, what would we have to do? Not too much. I mean, it's really it's about finding food. And if you're fasting, there's nothing you need to do. So you can go as long as you need to. But, you know, again, it just doesn't, doesn't really work so well for most people in the real world. And for most people, it would be, it would be months before you'd be done. Two and a half months of nine weeks is a, is a six-week fast here. It's a nine-week process. That's more than two months. Not, not so many people could do that. So fortunately, and I started saying, I'm not even sure it's really ideal for everyone anyway, because although there, there'd be a huge benefit to getting all the toxins out of your body, if you go, well, all that you could do in one fast. I don't believe anyone's ever going to completely cleanse with a single fast, no matter how long they go. You can't get to zero fat. And we store toxins not just in fat, but in muscle, in organs. So there's no guarantee you're ever going to completely cleanse no matter how long you go. But if you go until you've depleted all your reserves, you are going to be very, very skinny. You ever see the pictures and video of people leaving concentration camps in World War II? They're alive, but they don't have much body fat, right? 2% body fat is what your body needs to survive. That's pretty scary, okay? I mean, if you went till there's really, so you had to stop, it would take you a long time to rebuild your strength. So if we live in the forest and time meant nothing because there's nothing you needed to do, that'd be one thing. But most of you have lives you need to get back to. You've got things you need to go do. It makes sense for someone to go that long if they have a strong reason to do that. So the guy who went four and a half months was, had been diagnosed with stage four testicular cancer. And they told him he would be dead within a few months. There, there's nothing they could do. And so he wanted to go as long as possible. He found, in fact, the original plan was for him to go six weeks, 42 days. At the end of 42 days, he said to me, I want to keep going and I want your guidance, but I'm gonna go one way or the other, with or without you, I'm gonna keep fasting. And so I said, okay. And I, I continued to guide him through the process. We spoke every day. When we got to four and a half months, I said to him, I think that's long enough. And he agreed to stop. They could find no trace of cancer. Now your body kills cancer cells. I mean, only, ha only half the population is gonna develop cancer. That's because the other half of us, our bodies are destroying those cancer cells as they form. Fasting allows your body to get ahead. So just in the last couple weeks, we, uh, Giselle. Yeah, so like, I don't want to say like no shit, but like no shit, you know what I mean? That people have this idea of cancer because cancer is so romanticized. And this is like, this is such a trigger for me. <laughs> like it actually kind of is. Um, people have this idea of cancer that like, it's this like magical thing that can't be cured because people who get cancer go through these like awful treatments that destroy their health and end up dying anyway um it never occurs to them that the treatments just don't work and they're stupid and antiquated and only still around because they generate so much money and that the entire cancer industry is just to like support the continuation of these treatments being the popular first choice for anybody who is who doesn't take care of themselves or or unknowingly makes the wrong choices with regards to their health um so yeah no shit like if you don't eat your fucking cancer is going to go away like obviously um but I, I guess to people who like to, to people who would even be like a candidate for like a fat camp probably like mind-blowing for them like oh my god he cured the cancer with not eating well it can definitely make me less fat then um yeah i mean like i don't know I just don't, you, I don't think you can fast for that long. If you're, if you're like lying around doing nothing. Okay. I guess I don't, I don't know. This is a, a retreat, obviously. Like, I guess he has like a yoga studio there too. Is he putting these people through like yoga workouts? Um, maybe, I, I don't know. It's possible. I guess maybe it's possible to do like light yoga and fast for that long not the types of yoga classes that I was doing in fast for that long. Like, no, those were like fucking very hard. Um, so yeah, like I guess, okay. So, so here's basically what it comes down to. If you're really fat, like 400 pounds, 500 pounds, and you have absolutely no plan to work out ever. Yeah. Okay, you can fast as long as you want. Right. But if you're like, if you're just kind of fat and you have, 
the goal of not just looking like a skeleton you want to like actually like get fit and have a nice body then i think two to three day fasts multiple two to three day fasts is the better way to go because you can you can work out in that time and, and you should be doing both right that's my opinion um i guess that's technically i don't say that's the harder choice but that choice has more steps involved and I think a lot of people, when the, the reason fasting appeals to them is because there's virtually no steps involved. It's just like, don't eat, period, right? It's not like, well, don't eat for two days and then eat and then don't eat for three days and then eat. And oh, by the way, do this workout, you know, do these like eight workouts. It's, it's too many, it's too like, not confusing, but it's just too much for people to keep track of. I'll put a video with Aga, that was what, two weeks ago, roughly? Three, something like that, a couple weeks ago, with a client who came to us with a brain tumor. She was told it was going to continue to progress. It was going to grow. Or they don't know if it's malignant or not, but it was a brain tumor. And they're telling her, you need, you need to do something. She did not want, did not want conventional medicine. Because that hadn't worked out for anyone in her family. They'd all had conventional treatment and died anyway. So she came and fasted, and now it's been about six months since she was like, uh, last diagnosed. And they said it's going to keep growing. Just had it tested. Hasn't grown at all. And it hasn't got any smaller, but it hasn't grown. And that's a very positive sign. I just got a message two days ago from a woman completed a Skype fast with me last week. And she, she didn't wait. I encouraged her to wait a couple weeks before going to get checked. She went right away. And her tumor is smaller. This is the one with breast tumor. Okay, it's smaller than it was a month ago. And that's what happens every time. Had she continued fasting, she not fast longer. Had she continued fasting, it might have disappeared. And she continues making the best choices. Now that she's got all the garbage out of her body and made her body much healthier, much more vibrant and vital, it, it can continue to shrink. And then if she fasts again, she can probably take herself completely out of danger, right? So, while theoretically, yes, that makes sense. No, I think practically speaking, for a lot of reasons, it, it may not be in everyone's best interest. Now, you know what happens when you contact me? I had someone contact me this morning and say, I, I want to come fast for two weeks, and this is what I've got going on. And I wrote back and said, we'd be glad to guide you through the process. You're welcome here. And my strong recommendation is five weeks here, minimum, because they're dealing with a lower GI tract problem, ulcerative colitis. It's not going to heal in two weeks. It just doesn't happen. We've healed many people with ulcerative colitis, but it's a five or six week process. And keep in mind, your medicine's telling them, never gonna heal. You can take drugs for the rest of your life to, to try to moderate symptoms, but there is no way to cure this. Okay? This body can heal, but it's gonna take longer than he wants to give it. And this, this is the thing, right? I mean, we wanna be in touch with reality. Sometimes things take what they take. We can't speed that up, I mean, it's not something we can do to, I mean, what we can do is we can do the best job possible, rest as completely as we can, sip enough water, right? not get too much sun. You know, those, those things are gonna take us away from getting the most benefits, so we're, we're maximizing the benefit with the time we have. But we can't change the fact that if the body needs four weeks, it needs four weeks. It's not gonna happen on our schedule, it's gonna happen on the body's schedule. Let's say somebody has, does have surgery, yep. and then they learn about this whole process afterwards. Yep. If they were then interested in doing a fast, about how long after a fast from surgery? Surgery. Yeah, there's, there's no, they wouldn't have to wait. They could fast right after surgery. I have people that do that. I mean, I have people that plan it that way. They, they, they decide they're, they're going to get this thing done, whatever it is, and then they're going to fast immediately to heal afterward. We talked recently about, um, I think I mentioned, to, maybe you weren't all here yet, but I recently learned that if you get residency in Costa Rica, you have to get vaccinated. I've been vaccinated in over 30 years. I have no interest in vaccines, but I'm not going to I'm not gonna not complete my plans here because I've got a lot of blood invested here, time, energy, and money. So if that's what needs, if I can if I can get out of it somehow, I will. But if I can't get out of it, I'll get the vaccines. I'll immediately fast afterward. If I had any kind of medical procedure, I would fast immediately afterward hmm. to allow for the most rapid healing possible. Okay. Do you have any experiences with the, uh, people with MS? Um, so yeah, I mean, dude, dude seems to know his stuff. I guess it's more of like a healing retreat as opposed to like get fit and like, you know, like get like an Instagram worthy body in a couple of weeks or whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, dude seems to seems to know his stuff. Regarding the like fasting after surgery, I mean, I I, I guess that makes sense, because fasting will like help your body heal. You know, that's like what it does, I guess. Um, I guess that makes sense. I'm just thinking, cause like I had this like, I don't want to like fucking keep mentioning it, but like I had a, uh, I had a UTI. I got a UTI like four or five days ago, and. Um, I was like, I, at first I wasn't going to take antibiotics. I was like, okay, I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to fast. I'm going to fast. Or I was like my plan. And like, I started to fast and like my, like I could tell like it spread to my kidney because like it, my, my back started to hurt, like where my kidneys are. And like, it, it was kind of unfortunate because I, I'd never had a UTI before. I had no idea like what, I mean, I kind of knew what the symptoms were, but it was not like <laughs> at the front of my mind ever. Um, but the day that I felt it like coming on, I didn't know it was a UTI yet. I didn't like realize it. And I did my workout, which is like a three hour workout, lots of running. It's very like phys lots of physical stress on my body. Um, and then that night I went and I ate an extremely high protein meal. Okay. So it was the combination of like the UTI hitting me, um, like w when it hit, um, putting my body through the stress of training very hard and putting the additional stress on my kidneys from producing all of the like because when you when you eat protein your body produces ammonia to break down or as a as a byproduct of breaking down the protein so it was like okay i have the uti put a bunch of physical stress on my body that i need to recover from and put extra stress on my kidneys which were like 
kind of near the, I guess, infected region um, to break down all this protein. So the next day I kind of put all this together and I was like, fuck this, like it, it kind of hurt pretty bad. And I was, it was getting worse. You know, the symptoms were getting worse. So I was like, do I really, like I, I knew, I was like, okay, if I go take antibiotics, good chance that I'll be better in, in a day or two, you know? And if I don't, if I fast, then I might not get better, right? I have no experience with UTIs. I've never gotten one before. So like, I, I didn't, I didn't want to take the chance. So like, I, I wonder now, and again, having a UTI is not, um, like a bacterial infection is not, uh, is not recovering from surgery. It's not cancer. You know what I mean? So anyway, and, and I know that's not what he's saying. I'm just, you know, trying to compare to see if maybe you can map that over. Yep. Uh, the question is, do we have experience with people with MS? Um, not a lot. We fasted maybe, I fasted maybe, uh, somewhere between 12 and 15 people with MS. We've had great results uh, with most of them. MS is, is challenging. And so um, not everyone with MS is going to respond very quickly, by the way. Um, but we've seen amazing things. A young man, uh, Mexican descent, living in LA, who, when he, he was maybe 23, when I worked with him the first time, he's fasted with me a couple times. Um, first time he was in a wheelchair. And it wasn't that he couldn't walk, it was that walking was very painful and difficult for him. And so he'd been in a wheelchair for a year and a half. After the fast, he was walking without me for a wheelchair. And there was another woman who, our last location in the US, have you seen the picture up there? In the case, there's a picture of our last location. It was a three-story building. If you walked in on the center level, you could walk down or up. There were only two rooms on the main floor. And we had one with MS who couldn't lift one of her legs, so she would walk dragging her right leg behind her. And when she was there, we had other people who needed to be on those two guest rooms on the main level more than she did. So she would walk up the stairs, she would step up with her left foot, and then she would use her hands to pick her right foot up and put it on the next step, because she couldn't pick it up without using her hands. She spent six weeks with us, and by the time she left, she was walking without needing her hands. She was lifting that leg by itself. Okay. We usually see amazing improvements with MS. There have been a couple where it hasn't been, we haven't seen as much improvement as we would have liked to. But in some cases, it just takes more than one fast. I had a young man uh, fast with me via Skype years ago. He fasted with me via Skype because he didn't want to leave his house, ever, because he was incontinent. He couldn't, uh, he couldn't hold his bowel movements or urine. And so he stayed home, and he would you know, get himself, he could still walk, but he, was, he would run to the toilet. He never left his house. Maybe go in the backyard, but that was it. And by the time he was finished, he was much better, um, but it wasn't perfect yet. And I was like, hey, let's celebrate the, the improvements. And you know, understand, I told him in the beginning, it doesn't always happen with one fast, sometimes it takes two or three fasts with MS. He's never willing to fast again. He's tried everything else, to no avail. I, keep, I haven't heard from him for a couple years, but I used to hear from him every once in a while, I'd say, you gotta fast again. That's what's gonna do it. Anyway. Have you ever fasted so that's a good point. It's like, you know, I, ever since I like got, you know, I've, I've been doing OMAD for fucking years at this point, right? Or the warrior diet, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I, the reason I kept doing it is because I saw the benefits and just in casual conversation, like, you know, you'll, you'll talk about it and you'll talk about the benefits and some people will try it, right? Every once in a while I'll get somebody say like, Hey man, like the other day, you know, I, I remember a conversation and I tried doing the warrior diet and I feel amazing. It's great. I love it. Blah, blah, blah. But that's rare. You know, most people, they just kind of write it off immediately as something that they won't be able to do just because it's not pleasant, right? It's kind of crazy if you think about it, but the amount, you know, wherever you are right now, whatever city you live in, like if you think about the people, how many people live, let's say within a five mile radius of you, if you think about how many of them are willing or even consider themselves able to go without food for even 48 hours, right? Just think about that. It's, you could probably count them on one hand, people who'd be willing to do that, to not eat for 48 hours. Most people just aren't willing to do it, <clears throat> whether that's because they don't believe that it'll actually help or, or cure their symptoms. That might be, be one part of it. Um, but I, I think it's just that they, they don't want to give up their, their lifestyle. They don't want to, they don't want to give up food. They just don't want to do it. They like eating three times a day and having their ice cream at night and like, you know, whatever, having a beer while they like do whatever, I don't know, watch TV or something. They just enjoy doing that. And like, yeah, maybe their health is slowly deteriorating, right? Maybe they're getting fatter. They've like developed, I don't know, like heat seems to be dealing with people who have like very bad conditions. Um, is it that they don't think that fasting will actually do anything for them? Or is it that they, they do think it will, but they just don't want to try it because they just like food too much. And that's kind of the thing. It's like, that, that's why I don't really, you know, not that I don't try to help people, but if somebody, if somebody doesn't want to do something, what are you going to do? You can't make them do it. I don't like, uh, honestly, now I don't go out of my way to help anybody, right? Like, fine, I guess you could say I make these videos that's somehow helping by like, talking about these subjects and giving my opinion, which I, I personally believe is a, um, you know, is, is up there in, in quality of opinions as regards to like, you know, living a healthy lifestyle. But I, I'm not doing it because I fucking care. No offense about like any of you. Like I actually don't care. Like 
does, does it affect me in my, my little box? No, not really. Um, I'm doing it because this is, this is how like, I'm going to make my full-time income hopefully in the next year. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know, on a, on a, I guess, I don't want to say more extreme note, but even the people close to me, you know, people who are like in my, you know, friends, family, like at the end of the day, like the really the best thing that you can do is to just be a good example and, and not, not try to force it on anybody, not try to tell anybody to do anything. Just be in his best shape, in as good shape as possible, be as healthy as possible, have like, you know, good skin, good hair, uh, whatever. Like everybody's got different genetic issues they have to deal with. But at the end of the day, most people can get most of the way there by eating once a day, eating a lot of meat and fucking, you know, going to the gym and working out. It's like, it's so basic. You know what I mean? Not that I'm aware of. Um, what I mean is lots of people around the spectrum. People who are mildly autistic, my guess is we probably had quite a few of them. We've talked about this. This is for everyone's benefit. Uh, we probably had quite a few of those people, but I don't really know, for a fact. Actually, not true. It's not true. I did fast someone who was autistic. We didn't know at the time. Mildly autistic. We didn't know at the time. My godson. My godchild has autism. I fasted when he was two and a half years old. Um, five days. But he, was only, he only weighed 30 pounds. Um, he was born with a heart defect. He had a leaking valve. He had open heart surgery to correct it. By the time they were done, all of his valves leaked as a result of the surgery. So they had, he had open heart surgery again to try to fix the problems they created. And so by the time he was two and a half, he already had open heart surgery twice. Had been on medications his entire life, including a diuretic, because leaking valves mean excess fluid. Um, the first five months of his life, he had feeding tube that went up his nose and down his throat. It was very uncomfortable. He was miserable all the time. He's a great kid. But um, he fasted. He was off the drugs for six months, didn't need them. And I'll tell you something interesting. When he went for his next checkup, now his parents were concerned. Um, they were afraid that if they told the doctor that he, they'd, he'd, they'd taken him off medication and fasted him, that they, the state would take the kid. And so they come to visit me at Tanglewood, we were still in the US in that last location. When they got off the plane, so this has been years, I mean, he's now 18. He was doing half the time. Um, in fact, it was, uh, they arrived on July 4th. 18 or 19 years ago. I don't remember exactly what year it was, but uh, he got off the plane and he was sick. Fever, sore throat, coughing, um, you know, tons of mucus. And I said to his parents, we, we already talked about fasting at some point. I said, this is what to do when you're sick. It's fast. This would be a perfect opportunity. And they agreed. And, and he could have gone longer, in fact. His parents couldn't go any longer. His parents were having, you know, getting a little nervous, but, but he could have gone, gone longer. I wouldn't normally, by the way, I wouldn't normally fast a child that young, not because there's anything wrong with fasting a child that young, but I didn't speak Dutch. He didn't speak English. I couldn't communicate with him directly. I, I didn't really know what was going on for him. Uh, and frankly, I wouldn't trust most parents. So I said to most parents, you need to take 100% responsibility. Most parents would say, sure. And then if anything happened, they'd sue your butt off, right? His parents are some of my closest friends in the world and they are completely honest. And I knew I could trust that if anything happened, they would have taken responsibility for it. They, they would have said, this is our decision. It's not his fault. This is what we just chose to do. But um, anyway, he went five days. He was off all medications. Uh, we told the, they told the doctor that the, when they arrived, when they arrived, one of their bags was lost. So I said to them, why don't you tell the doctor that the medication was in the bag that was lost? And when, by the time he showed up five days later, he was doing so well, he decided to leave him off the drug. That's what they told him. They didn't say anything about fast. But in this checkup, the doctor said, well, that's, that's fine. I said, oh, yeah, it's, He's pretty small for his age, which happens to vegan children. Vegan children grow more slowly. That's a positive thing, by the way. You want children to go slowly. The faster people grow and develop, for instance, uh, little girls today, um, you know, in undeveloped countries still start menstruating at 16 or so. In the US, I think the average is now 11, and their girls as young as five menstruating. Okay, this is because they're eating guys that are too high in hormones and protein, other things perhaps. Um, and girls that develop earlier have higher instances of breast and ovarian cancer later in life. Okay, so you want to develop slowly. That's perfectly fine. There's no rush. Uh, he was a small kid, typical for a vegan kid. And the doctor said, What are you feeding him? And for whatever reason, they decided to tell him the truth. The truth was, He's only ever had breast milk when he was a baby, an infant. And then since then, fruit and salad. That's it. And the doctor freaked out. And he ordered every test he could think of, sure, sure that he was going to have all kinds of issues as a result of this. And when the test results came back, he said, aside from the heart defect he was born with, this is the healthiest two-year-old I've ever seen. Now, it was only later on. Uh, he was probably in fourth or fifth grade, and he was having trouble in school. And they went to get some tests to see what was going on, if there was some kind of learning disability, and found out that he was actually mildly autistic. Um, the plot thickens. Um, hmm. Vegan children, huh? Um, okay, so I, I mentioned this in the one of the Patrick Baboumian videos that I did that I guess nobody actually cares about that guy because <laughs> nobody watched those videos, but um, the whole statistic about, what is it? Like, oh God, I'm so going to remember all this. Like girls develop, do girls get their, what is it? They, they get their period earlier now, right? They go, they go through puberty earlier. Um, is a result of like they've connected that to a high intake of meat right and um basically what what that statistic is is based on is a um the intake of uh like the the meat intake of b girls between three and seven years old okay now like if you think about it what kind of meat are girls that are between three and seven likely to eat fucking happy meals 
fast food from McDonald's. They're not, they're not eating like lean cuts of meat. You know what I mean? And, and who's likely to take their kids to McDonald's? What, what type of people, what socioeconomic background do you think these people are likely to come from? No offense. I fucking ate McDonald's as a kid too. I'm not saying like, you know, whatever, but like people, basically poor people, right. Are more likely to fucking take their kids to McDonald's, get them a happy meal, chicken nuggets, whatever, which is processed food. Number one, number two, when you get the the processed food, you're going to get the fries, you're going to get the Coke, you're going to get the ice cream. You're going to get, you're just kind of like eat a lot of shit food in general. That's number one, two, and three, I guess. Also in, um, families that have a lower socioeconomic background or whatever, less likely for the father to be present. Okay. And early onset puberty has been linked to absentee fatherism. I don't know. Absent fathers. Early onset puberty in girls has specifically been linked to the father not being present in the household. Like n- n- has never been there. Right. So like on the one hand, you know, is it really like you, you, you say, okay, we've got this condition and it's linked to this variable, right? But this variable is is not really what it's linked to directly. What it's linked to is a much larger set of variables and they're picking one variable within that large set and saying, oh, it's because of this, because this is inside this larger thing, right? When it's entirely possible that what this is actually linked to, the early onset puberty, is not this one specific thing, right? It's something else or a combination of other things inside but they don't address that, right? This gets repeated in like sound bites, like our lovely doctor friend here. Um, and people just take it at face value, right? They're like, oh, well, you know, it must be true. I won't, you know, check that at all, but okay. You know, he seems smart, so I believe him. To be fair, he does seem like a smart guy. Seems like he knows his stuff with fasting. But w- when you hear something like this, it's it's clear that the guy like, you know, read like a BuzzFeed headline and is repeating it now without having actually looked into it. No offense if you ever watch this. Um, Also, vegan children. (laughs) I don't know. Like, (laughs) other than the fact that he has autism and was born with fucking, like, fucked up heart valves, he's the healthiest two-year-old we've ever seen. Okay. Cool story, bro. Is that not the dumbest shit you've ever heard? Like, what does that even mean? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It's the antibiotics, I swear. You're making me stupid. But you take your kid to a doctor, he's got fucked up heart valves, and then he gets autism. Maybe it has to do with the fact that you only feed him fucking plants, like uh, (laughs) fruits and vegetables, like not even like any beans or anything. Like, I don't know, it's so stupid. But honestly, like straight up, man, like, sorry, any vegans who watch this, but you guys, you get what you deserve. You, you know, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. You're going, you're going to, and fine, I understand, like it's for the animals, blah, 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 but do you not, do you not know how to use like the internet? Like, do you, do you not know that, for example, liver is the most nutrient dense food on the planet? Like you, you, or milk, like actual raw milk, real milk, fucking cow milk, holy shit. Like, do you, do you not, do you not, uh, these people, they just do, they do a basic amount of research. And to be fair, I don't know. I, I think I think a lot of the times, I think the vegan thing, I think what it really comes from is an eating disorder. I don't think it really comes from any sort of care for animals. I think a lot of these people, they have eating disorders and they're drawn to veganism as a way to naturally, to like restrict themselves in a way that's like socially palatable. That's like a prude, like um, you can't like look at it and be like, oh, that's not good. I, I can't think of the word right now. I'm like actually feeling kind of retarded. Um, but they're drawn to veganism because of that. And then they have kids and then they, they kind of push that on their kids as well. Um, as opposed to, in my experience, what I've seen, the vegans who do it for the animals or for ethical reasons, they're, they're always much healthier. They're like actually like, you know, they're fucking, you know, the examples like vegan gains, Patrick Baboumian, like I said, um, blissful athlete, like they are, you know, they, they have like some sort of shape to their body. Whereas the ones who don't, they never mention animals. They never mention ethical reasons. It's always like what I bought at the fucking grocery store. You know what I mean? Anyway. As his mother. His mother had been out in society functioning, had her own business, been married for years and had no idea. But the doctor said, there's usually a genetic component. And so they both got tested. Turns out she, she wasn't surprised. She, um, the last time I was in, in town, I didn't have time to get to their town when I was in Holland. I was in Amsterdam for an event, but only had an extra day or so and they lived a bit away and I didn't have that much time. So Teo and, and Flynn came to visit me and Ingrid didn't come because she was feeling a bit stressed, and when she's stressed, she needs to close the door and have her space by herself. That's, just, that's typical for people who are autistic. 
So she, you know, she said, she knows we've been very, very good friends now for 20 years. She said, I know you understand, but I, I, can't, I can't leave the house today. Yo, you know what? Like, sometimes, like, I want to I wanna go to a doctor and, like, get diagnosed with something, like, anything. Like, give me, give me some diagnosis so I can, like, how do I, like, can I, can I get on, like, welfare? Do, do autistic people, do they get welfare? Is that possible? Can I, like, can I get that somehow? Free money or, like, free anything? Or just an easier life in general? Like, how do I, how do I milk this, you know? Because, like, come on, o autistic people need to shut the door when they're stressed out. Okay. <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> this is like the extent of like modern medicine these days. Like, it's been proven that when autistic people get stressed out, they need to like close the door and be by themselves. Okay. Like, who doesn't? You know what I mean? Oh, how do I milk this? So that's the only experience that I'm sure about. Oh, it's only with autistic, but I, I, I'm sure there are probably others. I'm serious autism. Serious autism? No. And for how long? Can a child fast? Like, is this. Yeah, children children can typically fast for weeks, like adults. Mm -hmm. They go through the reserves more slowly, just like smaller adults do. I had a young man uh, years ago. Uh, there was an event. One of my favorite events was a weekend event. It was called the it was called the Green Living Festival, something like that. No, it was called the Living Now Festival. The organization was called Green Living. But Living Now Festival was outside of Buffalo years ago, and I spoke there several years in a row. It was on a giant sculpture park. It's beautiful, rolling hills, it was spectacular. Everyone camped out. And one year, I met this family there, a couple with two young kids, and probably eight or nine years later. The, the woman contacted me and said, I don't know if you remember me. I met you with my husband and two kids. Our son is now, Leland is now, uh, he was 14. He'd probably been forward in like 10 years. Um, he's having all kinds of issues and uh, health issues and psychological issues. And we thought about you. You know, we don't believe in medicine. We thought maybe you could help. Um, what do you think? And so he wound up coming with his mother. And he was 14, but he was tiny for his, for his age. I mean, everyone, he looked like he was much younger. What was interesting was, he's brilliant and he's a genius. I had a, uh, a woman I knew who said, oh, I see you know Leland as well. Um, I've been communicating, I've been corresponding with him for 10 years, or for like five years. And then she said, do you have any idea how old he is? I was like, yeah, he's 14. She'd been having a conversation with him since he was nine. She thought she, thought she was talking to an adult. Because that's the way you communicate at nine. Right? Um, but he fasted for 21 days. And today he's... Great story, bro. Um, yeah, okay. So, I don't know. Like, here's, here's the thing with, like... Let's call it alternative medicine. <clears throat> Definitely a lot of... Like, it's honestly, it's kind of the same as, like, actual... I don't say actual medicine, but, like, Western medicine. Let's call it, right? Um, some some of it works, some of it doesn't work, and you kind of need to take a critical eye, like take a critical look at it, and hopefully you're like intelligent enough to look at it in a in a literal way and see what actually works, and and see things for really what they are. Like the the early onset puberty thing, like I mentioned before, like if you heard this guy say it, like he after you say twenty things that are correct about fasting or that seem like make it seem like you know what you're talking about about one thing and then you make a, a comment about something else people are going to kind of assume that that's true as well because you've been you're speaking with authority on on so many topics right um and you might not ever think to to research that additional little factoid um you know sucks for you you never try to do that because then you might end up vegan and you might end up making your kids vegan bad uh, bad call in my opinion like I get maybe maybe it's possible to do it in a healthy way but like why like actually why you know you could gonna go through all this bullshit to like help your kids fucking get what they need that they could from like instead of eating like literally just like one little piece of liver you know what I mean um, so you know like I said I, th I think he said some good stuff about fasting I don't know who he's fasting for fucking six weeks and I don't know what they're doing during these six weeks or three weeks or whatever um, but like why like what you know maybe i guess i guess maybe he's he's like dealing with sick people mainly right not like not healthy people who just want to fast like lose weight I, I guess maybe that's what it's for um and to be fair i have less experience with that but even even still you know do you need to go <laughs> not that it's bad to spend five weeks of your life in some fucking tropical paradise in costa rica and some like beautiful retreat where everybody's nice to you and like beautiful beaches and stuff like that and, like that's so bad um yeah, it sounds kind of good to me, honestly. Um, yeah, but anyway, like, <sighs> how long should I fast? I don't know. I'm just, I'm a fan of shorter fasts, but I also live an active lifestyle where I work out all the time, and I would I would die if I didn't eat for six weeks, especially if I try, like, I, I tried to, I've done a few 72-hour fasts. I think I've done two or three, and I think I've done three, actually, and the only reason I, I haven't done more is because they're so hard for me. I'm just, I feel like I'm actually going to die, and that's kind of the rule with fasting is, like, if you feel like shit, you should stop. If you actually feel like shit, not just, like, you're a little bitch, you want to eat, um, 
like I feel awful. And I'm like, why, why am I doing this? Like when you ask yourself that question, like, why am I doing this? It's kind of a sign you should stop. Um, whereas with 48, I feel great. Oh my God, the next day after 48, like I feel fucking amazing. I'm like, I don't know, my mind is just different. Uh, but the, the problem is that like I, I work out and since I started fasting, I do a lot of aerobics, like a lot of running, you know? And if I run five miles one day, five miles the next day, and I don't eat anything, that third day is gonna be brutal. And for what? Like why? You know, I, I need to get like the sucked in skull, like to look like, like you said, fucking Holocaust victim. No, I don't, I'm, I'm good. Um, anyway, you know, like I said, you got to take the good with the bad. I, I think everything he said is good, except the whole vegan thing. It's another whole bag of worms. Thank you. Who is this? Ricardo? Ricardo, right? Who was this? Yeah, Ricardo. Thank you for telling me to do this, Ricardo. If you guys have any other recommendations for videos or YouTubers, let me know. Leave me a comment. Peace.